Hey, this is Paul Mazurkowitz, the drummer from Cannibal Corpse, and you are watching Loud Tea. So, thank you, Paul, for uh, for this interview. And, uh, yeah, uh, I think you have created Cannibal Corpse 32 years ago. That is correct. Yes, 32 years ago this last December. It's uh, pretty pretty crazy to think of that. I know it's pretty intense, you know, to think that, you know, the, the, our heroes that are still around and, uh, you know, they, they've been around a lot longer. But I know it is crazy to think when we started a band, say, like Iron Maiden, you know, was only around, uh, you know, nine years, 10, 11 years. So... <laughs> interesting you know now here they are around 40 years old and we're we're pushing there so it's it's really pretty crazy to think about what what are you the the most proud of through the through the decades yeah i mean just the longevity of the band i think you know i mean you're you're always going to be proud of your firsts you know when we made our first cd you just never thought that may you know never happen and uh, you go on tour for the first time i mean those are always am amazing just accomplishments of course and then to have the longevity here we are right 32 years later and about to release our you know 15th uh, cd or album and uh you know we're still going strong and we're still relevant i mean exactly to be our age and to be still doing this is is just incredible so so i i would just say you know just that in itself that we're still around and we're doing well is is uh, uh, the biggest accomplishment we could ever uh, achieve basically after more than uh, 30 years in cannibal corpse how to stay motivated you know to 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 be on the forefront and uh, to be productive you know i think it's just we've um we love what we do you know we we started doing this back then when we were young and you had your dream and 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 you you know made it a reality so so i i think life's too short you just you gotta you keep pushing forward you never know uh, tomorrow's not uh you know guaranteed kind of a thing so i think you gotta just take make the most of your opportunities and we were very fortunate and lucky a lot of hard work as well to be granted an opportunity to to be in the position we're in so i think that just uh you know really keeps us motivated to uh to keep doing what we do oh yeah i mean and we're definitely not one of these bands that we're selling millions of records i think it may affect uh bigger artists like you know that have sold millions upon releases where right a lot of money was generated and you know it's it's a different uh way way it's working these days so so for us it's really always been about getting on the being on the road and you know selling merchandise and all that uh you know to to kind of bring in most of our income obviously the band has become our job and our profession and we make a living so uh it's very unfortunate in these times that we're not able to be out on the road because uh yeah we're not you know we're not making a lot of money by just sitting around you know selling the records that's for sure so um how did you stay healthy do you rehearse every day to to keep fit yeah, I mean, I try to, you know, we, uh, I, I need to keep up on my playing, of course, you know, to be able to maintain what we do and what I do. And, uh, you know, the older we get, or the older I get, it doesn't get any easier. So, so, I mean, it's really just the basics though, for the most part, you know, I, I, I've always said just in life in general to be healthy, you know, you got to get good sleep. You got to pretty much eat is pretty good, I guess, try to eat right, you know, stay hydrated, you know, drink plenty of water and, uh, you know, so though those basics help a lot, but uh, but definitely have to uh, you know have to maintain my my playing abilities, and I, I you know I try to play you know four or five times a week at least, and uh, you know keep up with what I need to do here because you know you never know. I mean, chances are we might not be out for a little while, hopefully sooner than later, but you know you kind of got to be ready to go here. I think, like I said, too, the older you get, it's it's a lot harder to get back into form. Not like when you were young, where you may be able to just maybe take time off and you have that natural uh, you know ability because you're 20 years old you know you're 25 you're 30 years old where you you have that natural uh, uh, energy happening without having to do anything well it's not the case anymore right so <laughs> so you gotta just kind of do what you can to keep uh keep pace so uh so let's go to to this uh 
this very new album. This is one of the highlights. Is uh, there are many songwriters for for this new album, and each song is a different flavor. You know. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm glad you uh, you know the fans seem to like it. I know looking at all the reaction online and everything from uh, you know from the fans and everybody seems to really enjoy it. So. Uh, You know, I mean, yeah, everybody writes differently, of course. You know, I'm, we're glad that we have three uh, prominent songwriters here and they can all have their own flavors and their own taste of how they uh, put together songs and how they sound. So um, that's that keeps everything diverse. And I think that's helped us over years um, because usually that's how it's done um, with us. So so but yeah, I mean, Inhumane Harvest, I think, is a great uh, a great song to get out first for the listeners um you know it's a little more easy going i mean i think the album intense intensifies once you really hear the whole thing um you know the rest of the the songs the 10 other ones we have i mean there, it's a pretty intense brutal record but but i yeah this inhumane harvest we put out is is a you know great riff got some great feel a cool uh, slow part and everything that uh, you can bang your head to and um you know i, I just can't wait for the fans to uh, hear the whole album uh in april Yeah, um, Eric, uh, of course, uh, is not very new in, into the band. You know, he, he has produced a lot of uh, Cannibal Corpse albums, but is uh, the new guitar player. And uh, I think most of most of all, is uh, is a very good friend of yours, right? Oh yeah, yeah, he's been a friend of, uh, with us before he started working with us, uh, producing the records back in, uh, you know, when, when was that now 2006 or when, whenever we did kill. Um, so he's been a friend with us for a long time. Uh, we've known him a long time and obviously we've worked with him a long time and, um, you know, great friend of ours. So it, you know, it, he just fit, fell right into place. He fit in, it right in. I mean, it, it made all the sense in the world, of course, him uh you know filling in on the last few tours we did in 2019 and and uh i mean he's just a, a great guy a hard worker and we I mean, can't say enough about the guy he's just awesome and we're we're happy to have him yeah um so he wrote uh three songs i think yes um, how did he help you to record the the drums in the in florida Well, I mean, you know, we, we, we use his studio, obviously, in St. Petersburg, Florida, Mono Recording. And, um, you know, we've been there a few times, so we wanted to do it again. It just makes sense to kind of stay local here, um, keeps things a little consistent. Um, you know, you don't have to really, you know, I just drive down the, the interstate a little bit farther than I would go to our practice facility. And, uh, you know, I'm at the studio and, you know, Eric, Eric's a you know, professional and he knows what to do. And he's been, he's done a lot of records and he's obviously you know, done us a few times. So, so we just, uh, you know, we just went about our business like we normally do, basically, you know, I mean, that's the good thing is we've had the experience. Nothing's new. Basically we can just go in and, you know, we've done it before he's done it. So, uh, You know, so he did, he did a great job, of course, on the whole production and, uh, you know, recording the drums and all that. And I'm, obviously, I go in there trying to be as prepared as I can. You know, you never mm -hmm. want to go into the studio and, uh, you know, waste time or anything of that nature. Time is money and you want to be as well prepared as you can be. And I and I and I was and, uh, you know, we knocked the drums out in, you know, less than a week or something of that nature. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I think it all turned out awesome. And Eric, like I said, just did a did a phenomenal job. So it was pretty fast. Yeah, for the most part, you know, I mean, you don't want to take too long. I mean, yeah, yeah, you 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 want to take your time, but at the same time, you don't, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be uh, dragged out. You know, you kind of I need to stay fresh as well. Um, you know, so you try to get a, maybe a couple of songs a day. Um, and then, and that's what we did. So, you know, you got 11 songs, you get a couple a day, do the math and, you know, we're, we're done, you know, before you know it. So, so maybe you, you recorded the, the drums for in a, one week, maybe. Yeah. Less than a week. I think it was somewhere around there. Oh, well, pretty fast. So can we say that, uh, Eric is the MVP of this album? <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. I mean, mo mo most definitely he is the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, the the sound of your drums is uh, so the the same drummer, the same uh, producer, but it's not quite the same sound in the drums. Yeah, I would say it's maybe more 
more natural, no? Yes, you're you're hundred percent. We wanted to really go as natural natural as we could and more so probably than we ever have. So we really worked on that aspect. Um, that was one thing that uh, Eric and I decided, you know, I, I just love natural sounding drums. I'm old, old school, obviously, you know, uh, growing up and playing the pre, pre, you know, pre triggers and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I really love a natural drum sound, you know, and it might get a little tough in, in, in the in death metal kind of thing because it needs to, you know, maybe it's not going to cut through as much. But I think we just, you know, we said we got to get a natural sound. We want, we want everything to sound just uh, you know natural so so we did and i think it uh, i think it right i'm glad you pointed it out because uh it definitely is was the case and um you know um that it, it's a good thing i i think it turned out great so you know some some people might say oh you know hard to hear the kicks and all that because they're used to hearing the clickiness of, of the kick drum and you know i mean that just to me it just takes away and i'd rather feel the kick drums than than actually hear them you know you want to hear them but you know you really need to feel them so so I, um, you know, I think we did a good job of, 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 of obtaining a natural drum sound. But, you know, to me, it, I've always wanted a natural drum sound, you know. And usually it's kind of like, you know, let the producer do his thing. You know, he's the one that's going to know the best for, you know, he knows what he's doing, m mixing and, you know, and whatnot. But, but I think we've always really tried to go with a more natural drum sound. I mean, it might have been a little rougher on maybe the kick drums over, over some albums perhaps. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that's important. I, 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 and I, you want to sound like a real band, you know. Because we are a band, and and I think we're going to sound as close as we would uh, live on a recording like like we just did here. So, so uh, yeah, I think it's very important to, to have a natural drum sound. Yeah. Uh, so recorded again in, in Tampa. Uh, is Tampa still the mecca of death metal? You know, I don't know. I mean, um, it was crazy that that it was termed that. I guess back in the late '80s, early '90s, when we, uh, you know, came down to record, and all the bands were so many of the bands obviously were from here, or or they made their base here because I think a lot of the bands that people think are from Tampa were not really from Tampa. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, we get kind of mixed in with that because we've been living here for so long that people think, oh, we're you know we're Tampa band. Well, it's like, well, no, we're originally from Buffalo, New York, but right, we live. <laughs> in Tampa a long time so you know um, I mean there's it's just it's a great scene of course still and there's still a bunch of bands around and all that and you know a lot of bands are gonna come and play here and and a lot of fans are gonna show up so you know I'm uh, it's tough for me to answer though because I I really don't uh, I'm not involved in the scene like I once was I guess back when I was younger kind of a thing so so a lot of times I'm kind of in my own world here not 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 knowing what's going on you know I got to be told oh that's happening this is going what I don't know I'm you know home doing my thing these days but uh, you know but it's still a you know it's still I, I it's still a great music scene so um, I'm sure this the, the scene is is definitely thriving you know maybe not like it was once maybe in the early days who knows I don't know uh, like I said I I'm out of the loop <laughs> do, do you know that um, many French bands recorded in Florida in the 90s uh, like uh, Loud Blast I remember when Loud Blast came yep I remember that yep and the band that you are you you toured with uh two years ago uh no return oh yeah that's right i do remember that i remember we, we heard that that they did yeah because i don't know if i knew that until we did maybe play with them i'm not quite sure but you know yeah that was awesome to play with those guys and of course a loud blast our very first tour in europe i mean that was amazing 1991 with them guys and uh yeah, I knew they they recorded at Morris Sound, so yeah, it was a big deal to come to Tampa back in the '90s. You know, I mean, it was it was a huge deal. Yeah. Um, what about the the artwork and uh, your your link with uh, Vincent Locke for the uh, the artwork that we can see? Well, yeah, I mean, he's uh, an amazing artist. We're glad that we still work with him, and he, you know, he's like a sixth member of the band basically at this point, right? You know, he's our visual guy. And, uh, you know, we had uh, the uncensored version, of course. I know that we had to make a censored version. We, we really just would love to have the uncensored version as being the only cover. But, you know, that's in a perfect world where it's not going to get censored or, or, you know, not be able to be put in some certain stores or what have you. But, uh, you know, but basically we came up with the title for this one. 
or I came up with it, and uh, you know, we decided on the title, and we had no idea what the what it was going to look like. It was kind of like, well, all we knew it, it it had to be pretty brutal with a with a name like Violence Unimagined. Well, I mean, that's you know, that should conjure up just thoughts of who knows, right? You know, <laughs> so. Uh, so we just gave Vince the title, and he gave us uh, came back with a few ideas and a few sketches, and you know we worked with him, and uh, you know came up with the ti- uh, the cover that we have, the uncensored version, right? Like I said, we had to send it to Metal Blade, and then you know they had to say, yeah, well, we're gonna need a censored version too." So then get back to Vince, and you know just kind of uh, tie in both covers in a sense, you know, make the 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 close up of the the profile of the woman, you know, with the with the tongue and all that is. You know, so it's obviously just ties in the uncensored version. But man, what a what a great piece of art! Both of them are great, you know. And I think that it's another thing the fans are really going to truly appreciate it. You know that we're kind of going back into uh, the old school kind of way that we, uh, you know, butchered at birth kind of thing. Wretched Spawn. I mean, some pretty intense pieces here. So, so I think that's uh, it's a it's a good thing though because we're Cannibal Corpse and and, and it's violence unimagined. So it better be in, in, intense and brutal. Do you think that Cannibal Corpse is uh, still censored as in the past, or it's the same, or what about censorship? A little bit here and there. I mean, from what we understand, it's not much, but, you know, I know we are having a few little issues in Germany in the last few years still, yeah. um, where we go and we can't, you know, certain parts of the country, we can't play this song, we can't play that, we can't sell it at the merch table, and... You know, so it's it's just it's still like unbelievable to us, and it always has been that this happens and is still going on. You know, I mean, it's just music; it's just it's just fictional art here. I mean, what what's the problem? But uh, it, it still happens, unfortunately. So I mean, we always just take it with uh, let it roll off our back, kind of a thing, and just keep moving forward, and you know, not letting it let uh, let it bother us or stop us in any way. And it hasn't. And you know, it's just unfortunate because really the fans are the ones that. That um, kind of lose out at the end of the day, you know, if, depending on where they are. You know, if they can't get the uncensored version, or if we can't play um, in their city or country, or certain songs can't be played, you know, we'll still move on, and it'll be great shows. But you know, they the, the fans are the ones that really end up missing out or losing out. So it's unfortunate that it's still out to happen. Uh, last question: I would like to know if uh, Jim Carrey is a cool guy or what. Oh, yeah, he's a really cool guy. He was awesome. I mean, it was so much fun to, to do the movie, of course, and to meet him. And, you know, for him to want us to be in the movie, it was amazing. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, really cool guy. I'll, I'll, you know, how can we ever forget that experience, of course, and, and then what it meant to the band, what it meant to death metal and, um, and all that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, he was a really cool guy. The director was very cool. I, I remember us being treated like kings, basically, on the movie set. I mean, Jim was so happy that we were there. And, you know, we're in awe of being there because we're on a movie set. We're just, you know, kids from Buffalo at that point. And, um, you know, see, he was, he was really cool. You know, the funny thing is, I always talk when people mention this, is um, it, we've never had any contact with him since. So you're always wondering, uh, you know, does he still like the music? I mean, did he buy the last CD? Is he cranking it right now in his you know, car or something, you know? But or or does he think it's, you know, what was that? What was I thinking? This is just my gosh, I must have been crazy. So, so yeah, always always kind of wonder uh, what he's thinking right now about uh, death metal and Cannibal Corpse. But uh, you know, maybe if we're lucky, one day we'll find out. But we may never know. So okay, Jim, Jim, please contact Cannibal Corpse guys. <laughs> Yes, come on, Jim. Let us know. Did you did you hear the new record? Come on, the new song. We we'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs>